Hello, I'm Miss Diane from the Ridgefield Library. I'd like to give you a short tutorial on how to uh, assemble your decorated kites after you're finished decorating them, of course. But first, I'd like to share a very special story with you. Uh, this book is by Jane Yolen called A Kite for Moon. And it's about a little boy who wants to reach the moon and he can't but he tries to send messages on kites and send to the moon. And at the end of the story, he is successful in a way. So I hope you enjoy the story. I hope you enjoy assembling your kites. And here we go. A Kite for Moon, written by Jane Yolen and her daughter, Heidi Stemple, and illustrated by Matt Phelan. This book was written for Neil Armstrong, who showed us the way. It was morning and moon sat alone in the sky. The stars were all abed. Nobody was singing to her. No one was sending up rockets or writing poems about her. No one was taking her photograph or painting her picture. Moon began to feel terribly sorry for herself. Down below, a very small boy flying his kite on the beach near his house looked up at the moon. Moon, he called up to her, don't be sad and he ran as far as he could all the way to the edge of the water where Moon sat on the horizon. He tried to hug the Moon as his mother did to him whenever he was unhappy, but Moon was too far away. So he wrote on his kite, promising to come someday for a visit. Then he let go of his kite, sending it up, up, up for moon. Days went by, years, moon waxed and waned. She counted shooting stars and meteors. She worried about peace down on the earth and strange objects whizzing by. She eclipsed. Many nights the boy watched Moon through a telescope his father had given him. And many days he sent up a new kite for Moon, red kites and blue kites and green kites, yellow. Some fell back to earth and some disappeared into the sky. And Moon watched as the boy grew. Here's the moon outside his window. Right? Every day the boy studied hard. He learned his large numbers and his small sums. He learned algebra and equations. He learned geometry and tried to square the circle. And he learned all about the sky and the moon. Here he was when he was young in elementary school. This could be middle or high school, and he looks like an adult. And he's still learning. Look at his books. Maybe he's in college. He learned to ride a bicycle, drive a car, fly a plane, and a rocket. Look at him. He looks like an astronaut. Here's the moon waxing and waning, going through its cycles of from a crescent to a half to a full moon and back again. Then one day when he had learned enough, he went up in a big rocket ship with a fiery tail. Hello, Moon, he said, I've come for that visit. And he said it with a deep voice because now he's a man. Now he's a man and here he is. This is Neil Armstrong, the very first man to ever touch the moon. And he touched the moon and he walked on the moon and the whole world watched. So that little girl 
is watching when there was a moon landing 52 years ago in 1969. And in 1969, I was watching Neil Armstrong on my TV come out of the spaceship and walk on the moon. It was the most exciting time, and that's why this was dedicated to Neil Armstrong, who showed us the way. He helped us learn the way to reach the moon, and that was his dream. I'm not sure if he sent kites to the moon, but it's a wonderful story. Okay, let's assemble this kite. Look at your parts. Carefully unroll things so you don't lose any of the, the parts as you unroll them. These rods are called spars. There are two short ones, one long one. The long one has a little black dot on it, you'll notice. That'll be important in a minute. This yellow piece is called a fitting. It gives your, it's going to contribute to giving your kite really good shape for flying. A circle, a little circle. Some special tape. There's four pieces. Well, you're, there's five pieces. I think you'll only need four. The handle with the string for flying and the tail. Oops, what did I forget? I forgot the part that you need to decorate. This is the body of the kite. The body of the kite. Plan your design with a square. It's a square turned on the side there. It looks more like a, uh, a diamond. The broad point, the wide point is at the top. The little narrow point is at the bottom facing you. And make your design. Do it really cool. Do it nice. This is what you're going to see when it's flying in the sky and you're down on the ground. So decorate your kite with permanent markers. Do not use water-based markers as the instructions say because they won't work. They have to be permanent markers. Now I mentioned instruction book. The instruction book is important. After you make your kite, if you follow my directions, you still have to read it. You have to read their safety instructions towards the back. Very, very important safety instructions, okay? Okay, let's get started. So you've decorated your kite and it looks really cool. We'll put that aside for a moment. You're gonna take your long spar, your long rod, the long one with that has that black dot. See the black dot on mine? You're gonna take this little circle and put it at the top. You're gonna take this fitting, it's called a fitting, and put that on the rod in the middle. I think it's a little easier if this face is down, not that's up, but if it faces down. Then you're going to need a little muscle. You're gonna pull that ring right up over the fitting and over the tip of the spar. I didn't get it the first time, I'm gonna do it again. See that? And it's nice and tight. After you get that on your spar, you're going to slide it down to the dot. And that's where it stays. Okay. All right. Bring back your gorgeously decorated body of your kite. We're going to be working on what's the back. The beautiful decorated part is underneath. It's touching the table, facing the table. And you're going to put the rod, the spar with the fitting right there where that, where that opening is, where that hole that looks like a, di a diamond is. You'll take one of the small spars, fit it into the fitting, fit, fit it into the, one of the holes on this side. To, I don't know, I am not using that special tape that you have because I want to reuse this. I want to give this to a child to make it home. So I'm using scotch tape, but you must use that special tape because you do not want your kite to fall apart. So you'll take the tape. The tape has to get run in the line the same direction as the rods, not like this. But if this is horizontal, the tape is horizontal, right? All right, now we do the other side. Put the spar in the fitting. Oh my, it's standing up in the air. And that's Important because that's going to give your kite shape to help it in flight. So you will need to pick this up this time and put your tape on. And now your, your kite is bowed. It has a bow look to it. It's curved. Okay. 
So right now, oh, pardon me, right now, turn it over. We want to see this is, mine is not decorated. Remember, yours will be beautifully decorated on this side. The decorated, the design part is on the top now. And you're going to take your handle and you're going to unwrap about 10 inches of thread. Make a loop. And then tie a knot to hold the loop. Tie the knot again and maybe tie it again because you do not want it to come out and lose your kite when it's in the air. Pull it nice and tight, pull it nice and tight. Then you're gonna stretch this loop long, hold the tippy top of it. You see it's still a loop, isn't it? There's a small loop because I stretched it out. We're going to reach underneath the kite, bring the loop up through the hole. Let me hold this so you can see, up through the hole. Now it's coming up on the top of that fitting, right? And it's gonna go down in the bottom of the fitting, but opposite on the diagonal on the other side. So I'm gonna show you more carefully how this looks, okay? So it went up and over. I'm gonna show you the back. You can see it better in the back, okay? So it goes diagonally across Diagonally across the fitting, diagonally. All right. Then you pull the loop out. You take this entire handle with all that string, you put it through the loop. And you pull it, and then it is tied tightly onto the fitting. Tied onto the fitting. And almost ready to fly, except that doesn't have a tail. So your last piece of tape will go in the bottom. Your fourth piece of tape will go in the bottom. And what you will do is tape, get, try to find an end to this long tail. You will tape the tail along with that last rod to the bottom. And the tape is going in the same direction as the rod. Let me make sure you can see that. There we go, okay? Now go all around your kite, push your tape down here, push your tape down on the other points, push it down over here, make sure it's pushed down really well here and at the top, and it should be good and strong and ready for you to take outside on a windy day. Now, if, it's not a windy day the day you make this. And if it's not a windy day the next day, you may want to go to the beach because there's usually a pretty strong wind if you go to the beach. So enjoy your kite. Take a picture of it. Send it to us at the library. Um, I can't wait to see it. Even bring one in in person when you visit if you'd like. But have a great time flying and best of luck. I was told these are guaranteed to fly. <clears throat> so I know you can do it if you try. Thank you and thank you for making the kite with me today. Bye-bye.